Welcome to number one of a five-part series, How to Analyze a Stock. In this video, we will look at stock charts and find out what they tell us about investing in a particular stock and whether we should do it or not. I'm Greg Kilpack, investment strategist and president of MarketTimingUniversity.com. Now, anytime you look at a stock chart, the past is representative of what might happen in the future. Now, there's no guarantee, of course, that this is going to happen, but it's a good place to start. If nothing changes, the stock will act in the future the same way it has acted in the past. Let me show you what I mean. Now, here's uh, a stock chart of Microsoft, and we're on Yahoo Finance here. Now, we're investors, so we want to look at the big picture for Microsoft. This is a chart going back to the early 90s. Um, Microsoft has shown two phases here. Back in the 90s, Microsoft was growing really fast, and it was a growth stock, and you can see that right here. Um, Microsoft went from the prices of around 3 to $5 a share all the way up to $50 a share. That's pretty fast growth. You can notice, though, that since then, Microsoft has essentially been going sideways. It went up a little bit towards the end of the last bull market right here, and it dropped quite a bit down through this point during the bear market, and then we're pretty much going sideways again. So what does that tell you about Microsoft? These days, Microsoft, since about 2001, has been a stable blue chip stock. It's not growing very fast, and so that's why you see all this sideways action. You see some ups and downs, but the overall direction is sideways. Now, this is a stock that's going to add a lot of stability to your portfolio, but it's not going to add much in terms of return. Unless you know to buy it down here and sell it up a little higher, you can make a little bit of a return. But this is a very stable stock, not the stock I want in my portfolio, because there's only so much growth that you're going to get out of a stock at some point. Sooner or later, a company's going to run out of room to grow. It's going to reach a saturation point, and then it's going to go sideways when it keeps up steady uh, income, but it's not really growing very much. You can see that down here if you go to the income statement real quick. You can see that overall, it's growing a little bit, but it's not growing very fast at all and that's reflected in the stock chart. So Microsoft is not a stock that I want to buy or at least to hold on to for very, any length of time. Let's go to a different stock chart. Take a look at it. Let's just pull up something random. How about Caterpillar? Another big blue chip stock. Now Caterpillar, let's look at a the big picture that's what we're looking at for, as investors now this is going back about five years I'm gonna go back even further than that because what I'm looking for is to see how the stock acted during bull markets as well as bear markets now you see that overall even though Caterpillar is a great big company and big blue chip stock it still climbed really well from 2003 to 2008 it went from 30 to about 80. That's about two and a half times. That's pretty good. Then during the last recession, it dropped all the way down from 80 back to 30. Wow, more than, <coughs> excuse me, more than a 50% drop. Since then, it's about more than three times since 2009, three to four times increase. So here's a stock that is volatile even though it's a blue chip stock but it has plenty of room to grow on the upside so after the next recession we would expect another similar event to happen a more than a 50 percent drop and then a big increase so after the next recession during the next recession i would expect it to drop to around 40 to 50 dollars a share and then climb up to past 110 all things being equal based on how fast they're making money uh, when the next bull market starts. So that's just kind of a quick snapshot of what Caterpillar is likely to do. Let's look at a growth stock that I have invested in. My favorite one, Priceline.com. 
Now let's look at the big picture for Priceline. Priceline, of course, started in the height of the internet boom and it got creamed out of the gate. But in the last five to eight years, it's done really, really well. And let's just look at that part. Okay. Now, from 2005, if you look in the upper left corner of the chart, January 2005, it was at $31 a share and it went up to 132 four or five times your money from here to here that's great so this is clearly a growth stock now it took a big hit from 2008 to 2009 where it went from 132 or so down to 50 it's more than a 60 percent drop in the price of the stock so a big hit there just like many other stocks but because it was a growth stock before during this bull market phase, when the bull market starts again, it's likely to be a growth stock again. You check the income statement to make sure it's growing once the new bull market starts. And if that's the case, that's likely to continue. That's why I bought uh, this stock, Priceline, in 2010, right around $200 a share, right around in here. And I tripled my money in the last four years. Um, this is a great stock to buy. Uh, any growth stock that's growing at this pace is a great stock to buy when the new bull market comes. So this is just a, a few things you want to look for. How the stock has acted during the last bull and bear markets is likely to, to show you what it's going to do in the next bull and bear markets. So this is the first thing you want to look at whenever you decide on uh, determine if you want to buy a stock for an investment. All right, we'll get into some different things to look at in videos two through five. In the meantime, please comment on this uh, video and go to my website and check it out. We've got some freebies there for you. MarketTimingUniversity.com. Look forward to seeing you there.